Well, hello world of YouTube. Uh, just wanted to let you know that I'm starting some posts here. It's my first time posting on YouTube. Um, I'm just going to make some posts about uh, this Crystal Radio Initiative that Eric Dollard and Aaron McCrami have, uh, McCrami, sorry, <coughs> have uh, come up with and I've got some people working on now, so I've uh, gotten started on my coil today. Went out and bought about 80 feet worth of 2x4 to uh, build myself a coil that's about 5 foot diameter. And it's going to have about 16 turns, a half inch wire on it, so should produce some power if we can get a good enough ground system put in for it. Um, i got to put in what I'm going to try and do is get some wire close to around the same size at the same length as what I'm using for my wavelength and uh, put it in a circle around my, around my coil and that way, you know, it might pick up a little more of the same frequency, I don't know, never really messed with this stuff too much, so all new to me but anyway this is the coil I built it's about like I said it's about five feet across and uh, I got still got to put my legs in there yet for it but I got some fiberglass rods that I'm gonna put in between there to wrap the coil on so yeah should work out pretty good um, you know, I've got all sorts of stuff I've been working on over the past couple of years. I just, I haven't made any posts whatsoever. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do a little catch up here. My junk shop. <laughs> As you can see, you got a little bit of uh, everything here. But what I was working on over here... My Bedini charger is nothing. So basically what you're seeing there is a Bedini style battery charger, solid like uh, self oscillating. But the only difference is I'm running it off of a MOSFET instead of running it off of a transistor. Now the way I did that was to set up now these two pots aren't actually being used they're just in the circuit still because I reconfigured it but uh, and this diode's twisted around so it's shorted out that diode doesn't actually it's just a bridge there but anywho I got a 1k ohm resistor on this side of the base and then on my output, I've got this potentiometer. You can adjust your frequency a little bit with the potentiometer, but it doesn't change it too much. Mostly just changes the amperage at which you're you're pulsing into the battery and out of your source. So I've got 1k here, and I've got 1k here. Now, you, like I said, you can adjust it. This is a 25k pot. So when I got it turned off all the way, it's just 1K. When I turn it up all the way, you're about 26K. Um, and I also have a, rec uh, a diode here that allows, so when the uh, core saturates and uh, starts to reverse direction, tech well, not reverse direction, but starts to collapse the magnetic field, um, instead of me blowing up my MOSFETs like I was doing every time I just keep this diode here runs back through the 1k ohm or yeah 1k resistor here which allows the circuit to uh, stay under about 12 volts negative or so as it pulls back through the system so it doesn't blow up my 
MOSFET because that was the problem I was having with these MOSFETs. It would load up and then the kickback would come and it would drive the voltage here up to about 40 or 50 volts which is too high for a MOSFET and then it would kill my MOSFET so I went through about 30 of them before I figured out how to do it right but now I've got it set up so uh, I've got this 1K going to the system and then you know I get a little bit of juice goes back to my source but uh, you know like I said it's that 1K there you're probably getting about 10 milliamps at 12, vol 12 to maybe 13 volts so anyhow um, you know, and then I've just got a an old diode there to catch the kickback, and I didn't do didn't do anything with uh, a capacitor yet. I'm thinking about putting a capacitor on this system in order to uh, catch the kickback and turn it into positive energy to the negative energy, and then I won't destroy my batteries. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking though that instead of having it hooked to that, we're going to wire it up to this sucker. And uh, we'll have technically three, three sides to the circuit, three different pulses going for each rotation sort of thing. But yeah, we should get some power out of that. And uh, yeah, I've been working on that for, I don't know, a while all sorts of different experiments with it winding pancake coils I've got two of these guys I was trying different experiments with that uh, what else have I messed around with oh my gasifier wood stove I built this out of an old old uh, hot water tank and uh, it it gasifies like I don't use it to gasify very often I just have a, a vacuum suction system that pulls the smoke out down filters it and then just spits the spits the usable burnable gas out the chimney right now I don't really use it for my generator which I should be but I just wanted it for heat this winter mostly and uh, I don't know. There's my old Bedini wheel. That thing's pretty much been put away. I used the wrong type of magnets. Didn't work where the hell. So, yep, that got shut down. But uh, yeah. So this is what we're gonna do. But anyway, this video is mostly just about me letting everybody know. I'm gonna build this coil for the crystal radio initiative I uh, used all the math that Eric Dollard uh, that Eric Dollard uses to wind his coils he has a video you can buy that tells you all about that it's only like seven bucks so I bought it well worth seven bucks by the way if you're into this sort of stuff um, It'll teach you pretty much, you know, how to, it'll teach you how to uh, wiring coils to resonate together, so if you want to build a, a big Tesla coil or, uh, you know, something that's like that, then it'll tell you how to do that and how to get the two coils to resonate together, you know, a little easier anyways, be able to work the math and uh, figure it out, so... Anywho, I just wanted to, uh, you know, say hi to you guys and let you know what's going on. Keep you updated here as soon as I get the coil wound and and uh, get a capacitor made for it. Got a few things I want to do, and uh, I got to research some materials for grounding. Uh, I was looking there actually um, at a, one of the hardware stores I was in today and they got 150 foot no 250 foot spool of I think it was 8 gauge possibly 
and you know, it's not quite big enough, but it's long enough, and I only wanted about 150 bucks for the whole spool, which isn't too bad, I don't think, but I have to research that a little more, too. Anywho, alright, this is Lee Bob signing off.